The most extreme example, and the most interesting one, was Turkey. Uh, to everyone's amazement, including mine, I know something about Turkey, the Turkish government actually took the position of 95% of the population and didn't join the war. Well, the, they, were, they were bitterly denounced here. I mean, Powell immediately, uh, as the moderate said, we're going to cut off all aid to Turkey and so on. Press denounced them. Everybody denounced them. Wolfowitz went beyond. Uh, he actually berated the Turkish military for permitting the government to follow the will of 95% of the population, and he ordered them uh, to apologize to America and s understand that their task is to help America. So he is the idealist in chief with a passion for democracy that can't be, you know, we just have to go breathless over. And in fact, it, hit, it fits his background. He was the strongest su supporter of uh, President Suharto of Indonesia, who is equal certainly comparable to Saddam Hussein, one of the worst murderers and torturers of the last uh, uh, quarter, uh, half century. Uh, uh, Wolfowitz supported him not only when he was ambassador, when he was ordered to do it, but long afterwards. In fact, he supported him after uh, the population had overthrown him. Uh, and he's still supporting him, saying how he, uh, well, for, you know, we can't overlook the fact that uh, he um, did some reconstruction in uh, 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 Indonesia, just as Saddam Hussein did in Iraq, and just as Hitler did in Germany, and so on. Find somebody who didn't. Uh, so that's the idealist. Uh, there was an election in Iraq, and personally, I think, you know, I applaud it. I mean, I think it's I applaud Iraqis who went to the polls. They should have. Uh, what was the U.S. attitude toward the elections? The U.S. tried in every imaginable way to prevent the elections. Prevent the elections. It went right through uh, almost to the end. In fact, I have a book that came out last summer in which I was just quoting the press, you know, New York Times, which was reporting accurately uh, U.S. efforts to undermine any potential election because it was cons they were concerned that if there was an election, uh, any kind of elected government uh, might call on the U.S. forces to leave. And the U.S. obviously can't accept that. So you had to do everything possible to stop an election. Uh, and uh, to make sure that there wouldn't be any problems in the election, uh, the U.S. forced out uh, the, the one element of the free press, namely Al Jazeera, which is the one independent press. Got to make sure that they're not there, uh, just like they had to bomb them out of Kabul and uh, bomb them out of Baghdad and so on, because you can't allow a free press around because it might report the wrong thing, especially since people are looking at it. So they were kicked out. The U.S. candidate was given every possible advantage, uh, total access to state television, all the resources. The same. Right through his worst atrocities. You know, they knew all about him. Long after the war with Iran, that wasn't the reason. Uh, and then supporting him again uh, in, Mar in April, March 1991, after the first world Gulf War, when there was a rebellion in Iraq, which probably would have overthrown him if the United States hadn't authorized Saddam to use uh, you know, aircraft and so on to crush the rebellion. And now, you know, if you're Thomas Friedman and so on, you talk about how um, you can't stand looking at the mass graves. It makes your heart pained and so on and so forth. You look at what Thomas Friedman was writing then and his colleagues, it was a little different. They were saying, well, you know, too bad that all this monstrous... Uh, uh, destruction is going on, but there's a consensus among the U.S. and its allies that Saddam Hussein offers more hope for the stability of his country and the region than those who are trying to overthrow them, throw him. That's New York Times correspondent Al Alan Cowell. Uh, Thomas Friedman, he says, well, you know, the best, what the best of all worlds for the United States, he said, would be an iron-fisted military junta that would rule Iraq the same way Saddam did, uh, much to the pleasure of US allies. Uh, that would be the best of all worlds. Well, we can't quite get that, so we'll have to settle for Saddam. OK, that's more reparations. Then come 10 years of sanctions, which we're not allowed to talk about. Uh, you, they're called UN sanctions, but that's nonsense. They're US sanctions. U UN would never have accepted them if the US didn't force them through. With Britain toddling along behind like they're supposed to do. Uh, so it's U.S. sanctions, which devastated the country, you know, killed hundreds of thousands of people, devastated the civilian society, 
compelled people to rely on Saddam just for survival. If it hadn't been for that, the Iraqis themselves probably would have sent Saddam the same way, you know, the same, on the same train as uh, Suharto and Ceausescu and uh, Marcos and a whole bunch of other monsters who the folks in Washington were supporting, many of them just as bad as Saddam and just as murderous, supported to the last minute. He probably would have been gone too. That's not just my opinion. It's the opinion of the Westerners, the Westerners who knew more about Iraq than any other, anyone else in the West, which is why they were kept out of the US press totally, uh, namely the two coordinators of the um, uh, Oil for Food program, uh, Dennis Halliday and Hans von Sponek, and in fact their successor, uh, respected international diplomats uh, uh, who re re resigned in protest because, as Halliday put it, the sanctions were just genocidal. Uh, 